kick things off with this review, I have a little trivia for you. The screenplay for Furiosa and Mad Max Saga was written by director George Miller prior to the release of 2015's Mad Max Fury Road and was the blueprint for that film. George Miller was definitely channeling his inner George Lucas and nine years after the release of Mad Max Fury Road, we finally have spin-off film Furiosa and Mad Max Saga on the big screen. But does it reach the dizzying heights of its predecessor? Well, almost. Spoiler warning for Furiosa and Mad Max Saga. Furiosa and Mad Max Saga is both a prequel to the much loved Mad Max Fury Road and an origin story of character Furiosa. In her journey from kidnapped child of the green place of many mothers to the badass Imperator for Immortan Joe we see in Fury Road. It's essentially a classic story of survival and revenge and leads us right up to the events of Mad Max Fury Road. Without completely ruining the film's story for you, that's the film's premise in a nutshell. And despite the poor opening that the box office may be suggesting otherwise, I would highly recommend this film to anyone that likes the Mad Max franchise or likes the post-apocalyptic genre. If you're wondering about the elephant in the room, yes, Mad Max does make an appearance in this film, but it's very blink and you'll miss it. His brief cameo has no bearing on the story being told, and for some that may be an issue. But for me, I was completely fine with the focus being on Furiosa. Like its predecessor, Fury Road, the high octane action sequences, choreography, stunt work and cinematography all stand out again and Furiosa may well be the most technically impressive blockbuster you will see this year, except maybe Dune Part 2. Whilst the story is a pretty cooker cutter revenge story, it is elevated through the strength of its world and bonkers characters. Furiosa's journey from child to adult expands the world building and lore already established in Fury Road, and takes us to destinations mentioned but never explicitly shown, such as Gas Town, Bullet Farm and The Green Place. Furiosa was shot on location in the Australian outback, and the vast desert landscapes really showcase just how barren the wastelands are. Furiosa and Mad Max Saga also provides a nice warm blanket fans of the franchise by anchoring the story with Furiosa's character, navigating between the conflict of newcomer Dementus, played by Chris Hemsworth, and established characters such as Immortan Joe, The War Boys and The Citadel. Although the two films are very much intertwined and complement each other, I wouldn't necessarily say Fury Road is essential viewing to enjoy Furiosa and Mad Max Saga. Newcomers to the franchise shouldn't have an issue following the narrative or enjoying this film, but you would be doing yourself an absolute disservice if you don't watch Fury Road prior to seeing this, or at least afterwards. It's great to see characters from Fury Road reprising their roles, but it's the performances of franchise newcomers Chris Hemsworth and Anya Taylor-Joy that garner the most praise. Chris Hemsworth practically steals the show, playing deranged warlord Dementus, and you can tell Chris Hemsworth had an absolute blast playing this character. Anya Taylor-Joy was equally great as adult Furiosa, replacing Charlize Theron as the adult Furiosa in this film. Charlize Theron was excellent in Fury Road, and Anya had some lofty boots to fill playing a slightly younger version of this character, but she completely bossed it and was very convincing as Furiosa. Tom Burke playing Praetorian Jack, Furiosa's mentor and possible love interest, also deserves a shout out for a very competent performance. However, the most underrated performance comes from child actor Alila Brown starring as young child Furiosa for the first hour or so of this film. For someone that had hardly any lines of dialogue, she did an impressive job of conveying emotion through her actions. Fair play to the makeup department and effects team 
for making the transition from young Furiosa to adult so seamless. I kid you not, it was so well done, I didn't even realise they had swapped actors initially, and I'm still not sure when they did it. The film has a very satisfying ending, and it was refreshing that the final showdown between Furiosa and Dementus was a war of words instead of a big action set piece. It makes it more impactful and satisfying to the overall narrative as the story is personal and one of revenge. The narrator telling the audience of the possible ways Dementus died was fitting for the franchise and the implied outcome for him was absolutely crazy. Now I won't ruin here. Dementus asks the question to Furiosa, do you have what it takes to make it epic? And I can confirm Furiosa does have it in her to make it epic. Do you have it in you to make it epic? Unfortunately, I do have a few issues with this film, despite the obvious praise I've just heaped on it. First of all, the runtime. This film is long. With a runtime of 2 hours and 28 minutes. In comparison, Mad Max Fury Road clocked in just under 2 hours, and Furiosa could have done with some trimming of the fat to create a tighter experience. You really do feel the runtime in parts, and I would argue that there are some pacing issues within the film, particularly the middle section. The film is broken into six parts, where the film flashes a numbered chapter title on the screen. I've noticed more and more films using this technique of storytelling, and I truly don't understand why this is becoming a trend, but for me personally, this is one movie technique I really don't enjoy. Although I praised the action sequences and filming of Furiosa, the moments where CGI was used were surprisingly poor in places. The most glaring example has to be when Chris Hemsworth's character Dementus is in the monster truck ramming down the gate. It's one of those moments where the CGI looks comically bad. Not quite Ant-Man Quantumania bad, but definitely bad enough to take you out of the film for a moment. Part of the problem with this film being a direct prequel to Mad Max Fury Road is the obvious comparison it evokes. I watched Mad Max Fury Road the day before seeing Furiosa and Mad Max Saga, and although I stand by my praise of the action and this film as a whole, Furiosa doesn't quite reach the same lofty heights as its predecessor. If you've never seen Fury Road, or it's been a minute since you last watched it, maybe this won't be as obvious, but if you've done the same as me, I imagine your opinion will also be the same. If Fury Road's action is an A rating, Furiosa's would be like a B-, which is still not to be sniffed at and better than a lot of other film franchises. To summarise, Furiosa A Mad Max Saga is a great film and sequel, with a satisfying story that leads right into Mad Max Fury Road. The action sequences, stunt work and choreography continues to impress, even if it doesn't quite reach the height of its predecessor. Series newcomers Chris Hemsworth and Anya Taylor-Joy excel in their respective roles, with Chris Hemsworth being the standout in this film. Despite the slow start at the box office, this is an easy recommendation to anyone that is a fan of the Mad Max franchise or the post-apocalyptic genre. Let me know in the comments whether you enjoyed Furiosa and Mad Max Saga. How do you feel about George Miller taking away the focus from Mad Max and telling different stories? If you're new here then hey, my name is Jackson and welcome to the channel. I cover all things TV and film and make both long form and short form content, such as reviews, reactions and film sleuthing for hidden references and details. My short term goal is to reach that elusive 1k sub club, but long term I want to build an active community where we can discuss the latest and greatest in TV and film together, whether that's live or in the comments. If this sounds appealing to you, then please hit that subscribe button and come and say hi. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. I'm serious, The darkest of angels.